we have an awesome interview tonight with artist Tyler e Epi, who is a self-taught artist who specializes in fine ink illustration, and he enjoys working with geometric patterns, mandalas, and symbols of spiritual guidance. Um, he also offers custom tattoo and logo design work. So we are excited to have Tyler tonight, who um, has come with us via uh, voice instead of video. Um, and that's fine, because that means that I get to share some of his awesome artwork with you guys on the screen. So welcome, Tyler. Thanks for joining us tonight. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Awesome. Uh, All right. So, just in general, we like to ask our guests um, a little bit about who they are, what they do, and what their purpose is here. So, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, that would be awesome. Okay. Um, I'll start. Um, I was born and raised uh, in Chicago, and the Chicago land area. Um, been drawing kind of on and off my whole life, although I never really took it seriously until about the age of 21. Um, I'm 24 now, so I've been kind of pursuing it full time for going on four years now. Excuse me. Um, as you stated, yeah, I mainly uh, focus on, you know, drafting illustration, finding illustration. Um, I do some uh, small web design, touch and design for, you know, commission work. But uh, I'm thinking this year I'm going to dive into the, uh, the world of acrylics and start teaching myself how to paint, get some color out there. That sounds awesome. Um, can you just uh, tell us who a few of your inspirations are as an artist or what helped you really get into the illustration and artist world? As far as um, being uh, inspired by any particular artist, um, I've always been inspired by you know the work of Salvador Dali and uh, M. C. Escher. Those two artists have always stood out to me. Um, just you know their kind of psychedelic surreality meets realistic situations. Um, you know, I've I've been drawing or you know utilizing techniques of both. Artists for years now. I've, um, you know, works dating back to like the age of 15. Um, specifically, you know, trying to recreate certain elements that uh, Dali and Esther had. Um, and as far as uh, geometry, I had not actually worked with any kind of geometric pattern until like 1920. Um, and I mean, the minute then I, you know, picked up the compass and started drafting the, uh, the flower of life pattern. I mean, it was on the, uh, just the uh, amount of negative space there is with geometric patterns. It, you know, it stands out to me because I work with, you know, manipulating negative space, I guess, in my sense. Um, you know, that's kind of the style of art form that I have. And so, you know, when I... Nice, yeah. I really like that when I look at any of your pieces, especially I have a couple of them. Um, when I look at any of the pieces, there's something new in like every corner, or even just some of the dot work that you put in. It, you can definitely tell that you put a lot of hours and, and time into what you do. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love the I love the DNA. Yeah, the DNA strands are really cool. We're looking at um, the the piece with the tree in the the different moon phases it's one of my favorites it's the one I've got showing yeah. right now yeah I titled that piece balance um, and actually that's one of my favorite pieces to date that I've done I really really impressed myself with that piece and as most artists can probably agree with me on you know we are constantly beating ourselves up but I'll speak for myself you know I'm never satisfied with my work or very seldom am I satisfied with the piece. You know, I'm always trying to dial it in and dial it in and tweak it and tweak it and just get it where it should be. And that piece was honestly the first piece of art that I created that upon completion I was like, you know, I was floored. I was like, holy shit, you know, like I learned a lot during the creation of that piece. Um, you know, both about myself and about different techniques and art. And, yeah, I 
mean, that piece just, it, it opened up a lot of new, new windows mentally for me, you know, in an artistic fashion. Like, I definitely was doing the uh, progress shots uh, via Instagram before that piece. Um, but that piece really, um, I don't know, I connected with Instagram a lot during the, uh, the, the making of that piece because one of the, the evenings, um, after I had posted my last private shot of the night, I was, you know, laying down and I'll never forget it. I'll never forget this moment because, you know, every time I look at that piece of artwork, I, I reflect on, on this night's event. But I'm looking at the piece, at a progress shot on Instagram, and it's still up there. You can see the piece. Um, and I'm looking at it, and on the left-hand side of the butterfly's wing, I noticed what resembled, like, the silhouette of a woman's face. And when I was illustrating that piece, I had no intention of including, you know, half of what's in that piece. I mean, the... Uh, the core idea for that illustration was the tree of life growing from the seed of life, and that's where it started. But when I illustrated it, I, it was too small to scale on a piece of paper, and so I had all this room left on the page. And so I'm like, okay, well, you know, where do I go from here? And so I just started, you know, going with it. And like I said, I sat back there and I, you know, I looked at the, the my last photo shot, and I noticed the. Uh, you know, it's saying a lot of a woman's face, and so the next morning when I woke up, I sketched in the mirrored images of that of a woman in my own face on the opposing side of the lens. And it was just like, I literally got goosebumps at how well it all pieced together. And yeah, I mean, I just went from there, and it's still one of my favorite pieces that I've done. Awesome. Well, that actually kind of answered my next question on what one of your favorite pieces were, but do you have a, a second favorite or another favorite you'd like to talk about? You know, it's funny you ask me that. Um, obviously, you know, with anything that you do, you know, it's supposed to be growing. Um, well, for a good year, year and a half, I felt like I was just kind of stagnant. You know, I wasn't really progressing as an artist. Um, and definitely these last, you know, four or five pieces that I've completed consecutively, I have just third, you know, done satisfied with the outcome. Um, um, the, the piece type of balance, um, that was a fairly recent piece. Um, I've completed, I did actually, uh, upon completing the balance, I I went back to that same idea of the tree growing from the seed, and um, that's displayed in the piece called Nature's Gift, and that's just the tree. Um, and with that piece, as you know, there's a man, and that's the same man in a tree from the Stick with that. I'm going about it. Uh, yeah. I'm the definitely some things. Awesome. Yeah, you cut out there towards the end, but I, th I think we we got most of what you were saying. <laughs> um. So let's see here. What are what are some things that that get you in the zone to create such uh symmetrical and just fully filled amazing pieces of work? Um, definitely music. I mean, music is my number one outlet of inspiration. Um, aside from other forms of art, you know, I'm constantly supporting other artists, buying art, you know, looking at art. I swerve out my life around artwork. Um, but, you know, my artwork wouldn't be um, without music. That's 100%. So. I'm constantly trying to, you know, do live concert events, live music, do whatever I can to get my hands on to, you know, inspire my craft. Do you have a favorite musician or any musicians you'd like to give a shout out to? Um, I mean, kind of cliche. Um, I was definitely brought up on 
you know, 70s, 60s rock and roll. He's not playing with the Grateful Dead. Um, the Grateful Dead's music is and has been for longer than any other artist the most inspiring to all areas of my life, not just art. And I'm constantly falling back on, you know, my love for the dead. Um, but recently, you know, um, I've, I have a really, really wide range of musical interests. So, um, recently Chipper's been at the top of my list uh, on a number of levels. I mean, I kind of fell out of love with electronic music, um, like music 21, 20, because I was like heavily indulged in the EDM scene from like 18, 19, 20 doing, you know, whatever the electronic show I can get my hands on. Um, but Tipper kind of reintroduced me to my love for electronic music, just because the way he incorporates that hip-hop, scribble, you know, DJ, mooch, down tempo, small sounds, ambient shit. I don't know, I really, I really like what he's doing. Yeah, he's definitely doing some awesome work. Um, yeah, and he's definitely interested. What I really love about it is what he's doing with Jonathan Singer and how he's really turning a lot of kids on to, you know, new age artwork. You know, a lot of these kids are seeing these images on the screens and not all of them, but some of them are, you know, going past just, you know, tripping out. They're actually pursuing, you know, these these images and you know really getting turned on to to the art scene and that's really important you know a lot of kids go their entire lives without really appreciating artwork and I think that's awful you know um, so I think that the incorporation of modern visual art and popular the electronic music is it's pretty fucking cool, you know. It's something that needs to be more common across the board. So definitely. Well, who are some other artists or people that you aspire to work with in the future? Well, um, anyone who follows me knows that I'm. I don't know. I get around, so to speak, in the art scene. I try to collaborate <laughs> with as many people as I can. And that's awesome. That's um, what it seems really about: is working with each other and helping each other grow. Exactly, I couldn't agree more. You know what I mean? A lot of artists, you know, they they dial in on their craft and they get a lot of, I don't know, they get a lot of respect and I think they let it get to them and they kind of shut themselves off from other artists and I think it sucks because a lot of these artists, if they, you know, would, instead of being so closed-minded and closed off to other artists and you know, working with them, I mean, we could really do something global with artwork, you know what I mean? And we're getting there. I mean, a lot of the artists in the current festival scene are, they're killing it. You know, the art scene is at an all-time high, in my opinion. I've never seen, you know, artists being more active in the last couple of years than I've ever seen it before. You know, it's sadness and Yeah, it totally does. Everyone's really, like, coming out of their shell and really just doing it. I think at first everybody was kind of sh scared to share their art with each other or work together, and they, they were in, like, a competitive mindset. And now people are really, like, they're realizing that it's a group effort and you got to build a group of people to go up with. You don't want to be up there by yourself because it's no fun when you're by yourself sharing the fame. Right, absolutely. You know, and I think... Um, I want to specifically touch on the topic of um, Alex Gray and how he is really opening up his arms to a lot of these current visionary artists, and I think that that is so important right now um, for kids to be seen because, you know, when somebody of that level of success is still humble enough and open-minded enough to not only appreciate another individual's artwork, but say, hey, come to my home and let's paint together. You know, let's 
why don't you come over and, and, and paint a room in my house? You know, and that's exactly what Alex is doing, and I think that that's huge. You know, and I, I'm super blessed to have been privileged to go there um, a few times and meet Alex. Um, definitely have made it a goal of mine to um, obviously learn to paint. And uh, once I get that down, I really want to get into the current scene and, you know, get up there and hopefully at some point have some artwork in the chapel. So that's definitely a goal of mine. Yeah, that's an amazing goal, too. I can't wait for you to accomplish that one. I feel like anyone that accomplishes that just deserves some great honor. And I, I feel like you'll get there. Because like you said, you've already had a chance to be there, not once, but at least twice. And that's just an awesome experience. And I'm really glad that you decided to touch on that. Yeah, and I, I definitely um, I recommend anyone who has the option, you know, if you get a weekend off of work, drive out there. It is open to the public. It's in our gallery. Um, if you go to cosm.org, I believe is the website, um, all the hours are on there, but go out there. I recommend waiting until the weather is nice because there is a whole, like, boat mod and there's all kinds of stuff outdoors that you want to experience, but go check it out. Donate if you can. He's working on the, uh, the Entheon building currently, um, which is essentially what the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors was, I believe before the new locations, um, but he's recreating it in a new epic fashion, so. That's awesome. Um, another thing I wanted to mention real quick, I meant to say it in your intro, but you were actually featured in Appalachian Jamwich in 2014, correct? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, it's kind of funny you bring that up. Um, I think it was in 2012, no, it was 2013, um, the headspace had an issue in Appalachian Jamwich, and Brett Dallas actually gave me a artist shout out in in one issue that year, and then um, the beginning of last year, 2014, they actually featured me as artist of the month, so that was really cool. And uh, yeah, just recently I have a uh, an ad going um, for uh, 2015. I just want to. Yeah, that's awesome. For, um, your issue of Appalachian Gemless was actually one of the first ones I was purchased um, by me. I had been gifted many of them, but I wasn't actually gifted one of yours, so I had to go purchase it. So it was in my collection of them. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So, yeah, was, the people were actually coming up to me. Yet. Oh no, we cut out. Are you still there? They were like, "Oh, it's out there." I, I hate stuff like that, but I, it was all in good fun. <laughs> well, that's awesome. It, yeah, it was definitely a good story. So shout out to Appalachian Gem, which we're trying to get Taco and Elise scheduled to be on an interview here too soon for yeah, um, Matt Tea Party. I, I definitely want to give a shout out to Taco and Elise and the whole Appalachian family. You guys are telling it. And keep inspiring the people that you're inspiring. As you guys are doing a good thing for the scene right now. For sure. Yeah, I love those guys. Um, so is there any specific places or um, shops or anything like that we should be looking for you in this year? Or anything big? Um, as far as, like, retail or, like, like rock vending festivals? Um, maybe both. Do you have any big festivals that you want to attend? It's kind of uh, up in the air right now. Uh, the last few years, I was in a different um, standpoint you know, as far as the festivals go. Um, and I was privileged to be getting into a lot of festivals as a vendor. Um, and it was great. Uh, I learned a lot um, being involved in the festival as a vendor, but it's definitely not where I want to be, you know, because as a vendor, you're very limited to, you know, what you can do at the festival. So this year I'm really trying to redirect my attention on, you know, getting into festivals as an artist and not a vendor. Um, so, kind of up in the air because I obviously have not yet started painting, and it's really hard for me to do the, the illustrating thing um, in a public fashion. One, because white paper is very unforgiving. Totally. <laughs> dirty. 
and you and you get dirty, you know. So my hands are dirty, and I'm trying to draw, and it's getting the paper dirty, and it just doesn't work. Um, but I will definitely be, you know, at as many festivals as I can physically attend this year. So I'm I'm almost positive I'll be at the big ones, you know, summer camp, uh, electric forest. Um, I want to do gratify, but I hear they need locations. Um, definitely Great North. Um, that's one specific festival that if you can only go to one festival, go to Great North Festival this year. Um, that festival is just they're on the right track. They have a lot of good uh, artists, both musically and visual artists. Um, Alex and Allison were the only this past year. The Welsh Brothers, um, Adam, Cy, the Cy B, I'm not sure how you pronounce it as name. Um, just far around a killer festival, so I would definitely recommend going to that one, and you can get into it, I'll be there. And hopefully, small we'll talk about me doing a poster for the event, but nothing solid set in stone, so. Understandable. Um, one of our viewers actually asked if. Um, I, I know this might be an interesting question. They asked if you worked with Enlightened Clothing, but I believe you you kind of straight into doing personal your personal projects. You said Enlightened. Yeah, somebody was asking about Enlightened because they said they've seen work that looks like yours. <laughs> yeah, um, that's kind of a sensitive subject. Yeah. yeah, the Enlightened Clothing was a project that I had created with a couple of close friends at the time. Um, we just, you know, had a difference in opinion, and I, I guess my needs weren't being met, if you will, um, so I'm really no longer affiliated with them. Totally understandable. Um, but, you know, I try to keep things civil, you know, I don't have any aggression or, you know, hatred towards the company. I just want, you know, my audience to know that if you want to support my artwork, support me directly, don't go through them. That's that's kind of where I wanted to, to point some viewers that were asking too. I just didn't know how to touch upon yeah. that myself. <laughs> I, I wish nothing. I wish nothing for the past for enlightened because it's a really awesome concept um, that I really had a lot to do with, and we were definitely inspiring a lot of people in the right way. Um, but yeah, my uh, attention will not be focused on that project at all. Understandable. So I just I just want to point people in the correct direction. So if they want to purchase any of your artwork, your prints, or any of your other awesome projects, we have uh, your personal website linked through projectbringmetolife.com, and it's tylerepi.com. Um, that way people can just promote it's you and help support you. It's tylerepiart.com. Oh, there we go. And the link the link will take you right to it. So um, yeah, that'll yeah, help. I mean, I'm constantly. I'm constantly and promoting all over Facebook, so I probably annoy my audience more often than not. <laughs> no, I actually like it, because the fan pages, we don't get the updates that artists do, so I, I've kind of had to do the same thing with my artwork, where I use my personal page to, to connect with people, and it gives us a more personable feel, and I like that you post on both pages, so that we can, don't miss what you're doing. Um, yeah, and Facebook definitely monitors... Um, you know, who's seeing what, and, and, and you know, Facebook's kind of crooked, so I definitely recommend um, to any individual trying to, like, run a business. Um, post on both your business and your personal page, you know, try to keep active on both pages, because sometimes I feel like certain things gain more attention on my artist page, and then certain things will gain more attention on my, my public page, so... It's good to hit both, you know, both yeah, parties. Just, definitely, and I just want to let people know that you do a lot of awesome giveaways, and I think it's amazing that you do so many um, different projects, and you do, not, maybe not giveaways, but even deals. I know you do a lot of print deals, and just you're really interactive with your fans, and you respond to what seems like everybody, so that's that's awesome. I know you must be busy. That's, a, that's like one of the biggest pieces of advice beneficial piece of advice that I could give to someone, you know, as an artist, as anyone really. I mean, you wanna you wanna be responsive to the people who are supporting you, you know, in all walks of life. And you know, I've always been, you know, a music groupie. I've always 
obsessed over artists and, you know, wanted to get autographs and wanted to know about their life history. And I'm a nerd, you know what I mean? And one thing for me that, that stands out is when I'm supporting an artist constantly, you know, even a simple just like recognition, a simple thank you, it goes a long way. You know, artists a lot of the time, they're getting so much support from so many different people and they're just so cold with their supporters and I don't understand how, you know, anyone can think that that's beneficial in the long run to be cold and to just brush off your supporters like that. So I'm constantly trying to connect with the people who are out there and, you know, supporting me because I couldn't fucking do it without the people who are supporting me. So. Totally true. Um, speaking of supporters, I saw that on your on your website you have a lot of tattoo um, work that people have done. How does that feel to have someone tattoo your work onto them? Honestly, it's, it's one of the coolest things in the world. I mean, to not only create a piece of artwork that appeals to people in that fashion, but for them to want to put it on their skin permanently, you know, that it says a lot. So, I mean, I'm so grateful to have people so supportive of what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And it's killer to see people try to take on certain illustrations that I've done because, you know, I mean, there are certain pieces that I could never recreate twice. You know? And I'm the Actually, only tattoo gun. <laughs> well, I've never honestly held a tattoo gun. I have a phobia with needles, which is why I don't actually do tattooing. But, you know, I mean, it's a whole new realm. I mean, some of my illustrations are, you know, there's a lot of lines that are running very close to other lines. And to, uh, to recreate that with, uh, you know, a tattoo gun, it's, it's very impressive. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm just kind of I'm going through your your tattoo gallery, and I'm just looking at them like, whoa, <laughs> that's got to be some intricate work. Um, I've never personally used a tattoo gun either. I'm also not a fan of needles, but I know that a lot of time and patience and hard work go into them, and it has to be nerve wracking trying to recreate um, one of your pieces just because they are so symmetrical and so detailed that having the, the chance to put that in someone's skin for forever has to be a little bit challenging. Absolutely. Let's see here. Also, um, while watching your, your time-lapse video, we noticed that you're a lefty. Um, <laughs> do a lot of people comment on that, or is it harder to do artwork that way? I guess, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's harder to do artwork. <laughs> because I've, I've always done it that way, you know what I mean? Um, I will say that I am one of two um, lefties in my whole family. Um, I don't know very many lefties, but most of the lefties I do know are very much so artistic, um, which I find very interesting. Yeah, I don't I've know how... I, I recently heard, um, I don't know how true um, the... Uh, the information was, but I was told that something like, what was it, there are only 10% of the Earth's population is left-handed, and 60% of left-handed um, individuals claim to be, you know, do art habitually. That's an amazing, yeah, I've, I know, I know several other lefties, and they're all really amazing artists, so... I mean, it makes sense that, that you would be left-handed, too. Um, I feel like your hand isn't, like, crossing the paper as much or something like that. I'm, I'm right-handed, unfortunately, so I deal with, like, well, rubbing my hand. That's definitely one thing um, that I struggled with a lot growing up, being left-handed, was the fact that you drag your hand as a lefty across what you're writing. Um, so smearing, you know, smearing was always an issue. Um, I really didn't work with things. When I would draw, I was mostly doing pencil, and that's kind of how I learned to shade. That's, that's all I would do. I would, you know, I would do a lot of realism stuff and focus on shading and, and lighting and stuff like that. Um, and it wasn't until, like, 
the age of 20, when I picked back up artwork, um, I started working with it a little bit more. And I want to specifically mention uh, Mark Serlo. He's an artist. He does a lot of art. Um, good friend of mine. He's inspiration of mine to this day. He actually contacted me personally. And he was like, hey, man, I just, you know, I want to reach out. He's like, I really like your artwork. You know, I can see a lot of potential in what you're doing. At the time, I was using, um, you know, sketch paper, really crappy paper, and I was using the particle pencils and just basic, uh, like, um, what, are, what is it called? Uh, the ballpoint pens. Mm -hmm. And he suggested um, picking up a couple different materials. Um, he suggested... Uh, bristle board paper. It's like a really heavy card. And then he suggested picking up um, Copic or Copic brand pen. And so literally the next day I, I woke up and I went out and I picked up those materials. Um, and it was on. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and I mean that. I mean, that was one of the most like pinnacle moments of my artistic career. But were they, when, you said some sort of pens? That... Yeah, it's just a brand. It's Copic. C O P I C is the brand. They're they're just like uh, micron pens. Nice. You know, really really fine tip um, drafting pens. Nice. But the combination the combination of really fine tip uh, drafting pens and a really heavy cardstock. I mean, there's no bleed, so you can hold your pen on the paper. You know, tip to paper. And it doesn't start to soak in, you know what I mean? It it, it it needs just that one dot and nothing more. So you pretty much have ultimate control, okay? Because when you're working with black ink on white paper, it's very unforgiving. I mean, one wrong line, one wrong dot, and that throws off the symmetry of your whole illustration. Totally. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Yeah. You should ask our viewers if they have any questions. Oh. Okay. He's going to ask our viewers if they have any other questions for you. Um, I was just going to ask you, do you have any favorite products maybe that you've used your artwork on, or do you want to tell us some of the different items people can get your artwork on? Um, as far as what I've produced? Yeah, like I, I see you have a, a nicely packed store with all kinds of items. They're all very beautiful. Yeah, um, I'm definitely always trying to branch out and, and try new things, you know, because with the art form that I currently do, um, it's you can only get so much dimension with it because it's, you know, it's, it's um, what's the word, uh, monochromatic, it's single color, there's one color. Mm -hmm. um, so I like utilizing my illustrations in various projects because it gives you a completely new perspective on that same piece of artwork. Um, so on just recently, actually today, um, moments before our interview, I got some information um, from a couple uh, other artists that I'm working with um, that I'm really super excited to be working with. Um, one of which is Art Blankets Online. They do all the uh, woven, heavyweight woven blankets. Mm -hmm. um, they recently just did work with um, on the Sage. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry, Autumn Sky, Alex Gray, and a couple other artists I can't think of right now. Um, but I'm really excited to see how my artwork translates to a woven blanket. Um, I've definitely done like large scale police blankets before, but those are um, die sublimated that have the big top of these. So the details almost spot on. Whereas with a woven blanket, it's legitimately woven, so you, you know your image is going to be a collection of all of those threads. So I'm really interested to see how well the, the detail translates. Uh, but keep a look out for that. Um, I should have samples in like four weeks, and I'll be posting, you know, from then on. And then uh, another project I'm really excited about, um, these wooden posters. I mean, it, I literally just found out about this project, like, today, so... <laughs> Yeah, I know you have, um, I was trying to find a picture of them. You have the little altar pieces. I believe you have some of those that you were trying to get to new homes. Um, and I know you have yeah, some um, awesome wallets, too. 
Yeah, the um, those are done with uh, Brett of uh, that Brett's out of California. Um, those are um, something I've been doing. Those, you know, we did a couple couple runs last year, and then decided to you know keep going with it this year. Um, these are the the wooden posters that I uh, just announced today. Those are with a different artist. Um, I'm not sure where he's out of. I think he's out of New York, but I'm really excited to do these posters. Um, the detail is just incredible. Um, I posted a sample. I don't know if you can pull it up off my Facebook right now and share it with the viewers, um, but that's going to be a really cool project, so keep an, keep an eye out for that. Awesome. Yeah, I will see if I can pull that picture up for you so we can share it with some people. Um, it's not a big deal. I'm not too worried about it. We do have, see, questions we do have a, a few questions here if, if you're interested in answering them. This was the first one. Um, yeah, absolutely. We had Alex who was asking um, what the name of the pens were again. I believe he spelled it for us once, but I think he missed it. I'm sorry. I'm, the name I'm of the, the pens that um, you were suggested oh, the, to use? The pens, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can get them from... Um, copicmarker.com, C-O-P-I-C, marker.com. Um, that's the brand name. They do make refillable ones. Um, those are the ones that I use. They're a little pricey, but if you're going to be doing a lot of drawing, you know, it, it pays for itself. Um, but they do offer disposable ones as well, and they're just about as good. The only difference is that once your tip runs out, even if you have ink left in the pen, you know, you're kind of forced to either throw out the pen for the sake of the tip or, you know, struggle with a, a busted tip. But all around, I swear by those markers. That's what I use for every single illustration that I do. Awesome. <laughs> All right. I didn't find the, the picture you're talking about on your Facebook, but I did pull up a picture of those wallets that I know you're trying to find homes for, and they are just awesome. The the hand pulled leather wallets. I think you have like six of them. Yep. Yeah, um. I actually I got five left now. One of them is pending. Um. I do them a really short run because you know they're pricey, both for me and for you know the the customer, consumer rather. Um. But they're you know they're all handmade one of a kind pieces of art. I've been carrying a wallet by the by the same artist, Jared Lawson Design. That's what, that's what he goes by. I awesome. mean his stuff is top notch. You're not going to find a better leather crafter in you know for for what you're paying. I mean it's phenomenal. Yeah, and that's something I want to express to our viewers and just people that listen that artwork like that and hand pulled leather and stuff when it's definitely like more than one artist in it that they should understand what they're what they're paying for and the, the money that's going into it is definitely like reasonable because it takes a lot of time to do those things and you put a lot of time into your designs and they put a lot of time into what they do too. Yeah, people I think, you know, it's not just so that people don't think that, that the item is worth what we're charging. People just don't work standpoint that, you know, there's so, like you mentioned, there's so many different hands involved in the project. You know, I take the time to make the illustration, then the illustration is made into a stand. He takes the time to stand the leather, you know, it's assembled, it's dyed. And by the time it's all said and done, I mean, there's so much work, cost of materials, $100 for something like that is a steal, you know, and I think people just need to be informed. Totally. Yeah, and... I, I just, I respect people who do get it and just like to remind people how much work goes into art and different pieces. Um, I personally have, I think, three three of your prints at least and a pin, maybe two, in a history. And I know you like work with people when they get bundles and different things like that. And it's really just good to support other artists. It, it's like enlightening to have your artwork as many of other artwork artist artwork I have around to like get you in that zone. So I'm, I'm yeah, really Yeah, totally. I mean any, anyone who knows me, like I'm constantly supporting the artists in our scene. I mean you'll rarely will you see me wearing my artwork. You know, I'm always wearing 
somebody else's artwork, multiple different artists. You know, I, I love the support the scene. You know, that's what it's all about. And Totally. Yeah, I mean, and you're always very colorful. <laughs> It, it makes me smile just thinking about the art scene right now, you know, where we're at as a community. So I think we're on the right uh... Totally. Um, one of our viewers, um, Samantha, who's actually, it's your birthday today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Samantha. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, she asks about how long it typically, typically takes you to complete a piece. Well, I mean, really it depends on... A, the complexity of the illustration, and B, how urgent, um, how, like, the completion of the illustration needs to be. Um, I'm pretty quick, I like to think, um, definitely with drafting. I mean, if I have an idea, I can get it drafted on the paper quite rapidly. Um, once the inking process, you know, takes over, that's, it's a whole other realm, um, I'm kind of struggling right now with uh, the way that I hold my instrument. Um, at a young age, I, I was just trained poorly on how to hold my pen. So, you know, after a very short period of, of me actually inking, um, my hand cramps up because I squeeze my pen so hard. Um, so if you notice in my progress steps, um, I always have a grip on my pen, mm -hmm. which is me trying to, you know, re how uh, do I say it? retrain my hand um, so that I can you know go longer with the pen um, but I like to think I'm pretty fast I don't know I've seen you crank out a couple through Facebook progress photos and I like that you do that so that people do realize like that you're doing it in multiple layers you sit down and then you take pictures and you just show people like what goes into a piece um, and you, you do seem to put them out pretty quickly. Not only that, then you get them printed and you get really beautiful products done with them quickly too. So you have a nice sense of balance, not only in your artwork, but your business and art life. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's, I've definitely learned a hell of a lot over the last few years, both as an artist and, you know, a business owner. You know, I'm not or wasn't still by any means in sales. You know, I've fucking never sold anything in my life. So I've always, you know, done physical labor. So upon trying to really focus on artwork as a, you know, as a career, as a job, I mean, sales is more than half of becoming a successful artist. So I really was, you know, forced to teach myself how to promote and operate myself as an artist, you know, operate a, a business. So... I definitely, um, I like to think I've got, you know, the whole manufacturing process dialed, up, dialed in. You know, once I get the artwork, it's a pretty rapid process upon, you know, having the artwork finished and having merchandise in hand. That's awesome. You definitely, definitely put some time into mastering your hustle, <laughs> as I'd like to say. Um <laughs> I see that you were uh, you were trying to reach ten thousand fans. Have you reached that personal goal yet? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I just said set a goal, um, kind of a, a spontaneous goal towards the end of last year. I was trying to break ten thousand um, by the first of the year. Um, one of my many many goals that I set for myself, you know, and that's important too. You got to set goals. You know, even if you're not always accomplishing all goals. As long as you're constantly growing and constantly progressing, you know, you got to have something to be working towards constantly. If, if, if you don't know what you're doing, figure out what you want, write it down, you know, figure out what you need to do to get that shit taken care of. And, yeah, I mean, that's, the, the 10,000 like was a, a goal that I didn't um, surpass by the end of the year, but I'm, you know, pretty close now. And, I'll get there. I'm not too worried about it. You know, those are just likes. It's just a number on Facebook. But I mean, it's just it's really impressive. Um, you just switched yeah. over from, I, I believe, like the Star Steppy designs to like your personal fan page, and to have that many likes that quickly, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I I recently uh, reestablished myself as an artist. You know, I started um, Star Step Designs, more of like a. a 
times and I was like 19, you know, so I was kind of young and, you know, not very wise at the time. Um, and so this year, to go into 2015 with a more, you know, professional look on my art. Um, so I, you know, we re- rebirthed myself as the artwork of Tyler Happy. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you know, people have been super supportive of my changeover, so I'm really grateful for that. Yeah, I feel like a lot of artists are going through that rebirthing process right now. I think it's part of the, the general awakening of the collective. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely important. I mean, you, you definitely want to have a professional look as an artist, you know, because that's the first thing that people see, you know. I mean, it, I hate it, but you know, appearances is, is almost everything. I mean, what people see the first time they see you, what you know, what they get out of the first encounter, and that's what that's what sticks. So you want to leave a good first impression. Definitely. Um, we had another fan question. They asked, um, "Do you work with any other mediums like pastels, paint, spray paint, etc.?" That was asked um, by Re. I, I did mention uh, earlier. Um, I really haven't stepped outside of the the black ink realm. I do work with colored pencil on occasion, um, Prismacolor colored pencil, but I guarantee you have my word, there will be a, a complete period with the year of 2015. So I definitely want to really focus on it to get some color into my portfolio. Personal suggestion, I think you should make a coloring book because I think it would be so fun to just be in the right state of mind and color some of your pictures. And I would hate to do it Actually, to one of your actual prints. Yeah, um, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, I recently, um, Phil Lewis, uh, uh, Phil Lewis Art, he kind of like started the whole psychedel- uh, psychedelic coloring books for adults. Um, he reached out to me um, and, you know, said some really kind things about what I've been accomplishing lately. So, the book has always been one of my goals. I have just been kind of holding off and waiting until I have enough solid artwork that I can compile into a book. Um, but I hope that um, once I do start pursuing that uh, endeavor, it will be in collaboration with Solaris. That's kind of my goal. I want to release a coloring book um, with Solaris. So, That'd be awesome. so I'm not stepping, you know, so I'm not stepping on any toes, so to speak. Understandable. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I just I think about that a lot when, even when I'm personally illustrating or when I'm looking at any black and white work, when I see someone who has so much detail, it's like, man, I just want to color that, and that would be so fun. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, you know, I would love to see my supporters, you know, have their own kind of hand in my artwork, you know, I would love to see how they view my artwork, you know, what does my artwork look through your eyes, so to speak. <laughs> totally. Well, I think we're we're getting ready to um, come close to the end. Did you have any other questions you wanted to ask, Christopher? Um, I didn't really have any question, but Tyler, I just want to say that your artwork's very amazing. And uh, I've been hanging out in the chat, and everybody in the chat is getting uh, super, super inspired by everything that you're doing. And I just want to give you all the love and say keep keep doing what you're doing because it's very inspiring, and, and we love it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, and like I said, just to anyone, follow your heart. You know, whatever makes you happy, whatever you're passionate about, focus on that. You know, stop whatever you're doing. Stop working at Taco Bell. Stop working for the asshole that you don't want to work for. Do what makes you happy because, you know, at the end of the day, when you're, you know, six feet under, it doesn't matter how much money you made. It doesn't matter how many years you worked for any one organization or one business, you know. What matters is how much you were smiling the entire time you were on this planet, you know. How you stay happy. That's the important piece of advice I can give to my supporters. But it may not awesome. be an easy route, you know. You're probably going to struggle a lot, you know, quitting your job, trying to do hair and makeup for a living. It might not work out the first five, six, seven times, but don't give up, you know, because whoever's up there, whoever looks out for all of us on this planet, whether it's God, Allah, whoever you're praying to, you know, they want all of us, each one of us to be happy. 
And if if you're doing the right things to pursue self happiness and self love, then you know everything's gonna fall into place for you. And I'm almost 100 percent sure on that. That's beautiful. Um, real quick, I was scanning through the the chat and I saw someone say, "Oh my gosh, holy artgasm!" It made me giggle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been seeing that. I like that orgasm. I like that term. That's a good term. Um, we had one more question from our viewers. They said, have you ever considered working or collaborating with producers on album art? Apple? Al album art? Like helping people with their CD artwork? Um, you're breaking up. I'm not sure. I can't understand what you're um, she, One of the viewers was asking if you've ever collaborated or worked on any album art or thought about it. Like a... Oh, al album artwork. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's that's kind of where my love for art started. Um, I've always wanted to do album art for a living. Um, I haven't actually uh, made any one particular illustration for an artist. Um, I was at the beginning or middle of last year supposed to do um, an album cover for Twelfth Planet, but I got super busy and just that project kind of fell under the rug. Um, it may still be an opportunity that's available to me, but I haven't really pursued it again. Um, but definitely, I mean, I would love to get my artwork out there, you know, as an album, as an album cover, or, totally. or any kind of music related project. Totally. Well, that's beautiful, and I really liked your message to the fans, and I, I just enjoyed this entire interview. It's been Totally awesome just being able to chat with you and get your full story. So uh, I just want to really thank you for coming on and um, let everyone know they can get your artwork. It was at tylerepiart.com. Is that correct? Yep, Tyler Epiart. And if you, you know, my, uh, you'll still be redirected to my current web page if you happen to have an older business card that has a star step page. You'll be automatically redirected. So. But yeah, it, it is Tyler Epi Art, and that's the same on um, Etsy as well, Tyler Epi Art. Awesome. Yeah, Etsy, Etsy's been an interesting platform to use. But that's awesome, and um, anyone else, we also have a, a small bio on his fan page through Project Bring Me to Life, and I'm, I'm just excited um, to watch your constant updates on your amazing line work. So just thanks for letting us ask some questions, and... We, we hope you tune in for some more episodes that are coming up. So. Yeah, thank you for having me. Honestly, this is definitely my first spoken phone interview. Um, so, mm -hmm. kind of start. You know, I was definitely honored to be a part of what you have going on. So. Beautiful. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you hop off here, and we'll connect later. And we're going to finish up this podcast. So, you have an amazing evening. You as well. Everyone listening, have a blessed night, and thanks for the continued support. Yeah, thank you, Tyler. Awesome. Have a, have a good night.